Hey guys, so today we'll talk about conditional probability, otherwise known as Bayes' theorem. And by the end, you'll understand not only the practical applications, but also the graphical representation. So let's get started. Now, we'll start off with something simple, something that I'm sure everybody has seen in school. Uh, we have a bag of marbles, and the bag is square, don't pay attention to it. And we split it some way. There's red and blue marbles, right? And so let's say there's 10 marbles total, right? Um, of them, six are red, six red, and four are blue, four blue. So how do we write that as a probability? Obviously, the, the bigger part will be red because there's more of them. We write P of red equals what? Six divided by 10, because there's 10 total. So that's 0 0.6, the probability of pulling out a red marble. And it will always be 0 0.6. If you keep putting it back and taking another one out, it's always going to be 60%. So that means, obviously, P of blue is what? 1 minus 0 0.6, or otherwise 40%, 0 0.4, right? Because there's four of them and six of the red ones. Simple, right? I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. Now, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Now, let's say that you have another probability graph, or probability square, I don't know, that's how I like to call it. Um, and this time, it's which hand you're using to pull out. So let's say you're right-handed. So the probability of using your right hand is 80%. Let's just say 0 0.8, right? So that must mean the probability of left, P of left, is 20%, 0 0.2, right? Um, so now it's combined. We have two variables here. We have which hand you pull into the bag and we have which color you pull out. So let's combine this and see what we get. We do a cross, right, like this. So now let's see. Um, we have the height of the red square, which is 0 0.6, and we have the length of the right hand. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.48. Um, the same thing with the left hand. We have the length of the le left hand square, which is 0 0.2 times the red. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.12. Um, now let's go the other way. We have right hand and blue, 0 0.8 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.32. And then we have blue and left hand, 0.4 times 0 0.2, 0 0.08. Now, what do we just do here? This is called independent probability. This is when you have two events and they're independent of each other. And this is how we write it. We write it of P of the intersection A and B, some two events, in our case, left or right hand and red or blue. And it's equal to, just as you noticed, the product of the two probabilities, P of A times P of B. So what do these numbers mean? These mean this means that if you just, if we look here, um, regardless of which hand you use, you're gonna have a 60% chance of pulling out a red one. But now if we take into account left or right hand, you have a 48% chance of putting in your right hand and taking out a red marble. And likewise, this 8% is the probability of what? Of pulling out a blue marble, with your left hand, right? Because both of them are less likely. You only have a 20% chance of using your left hand and you have an only 40% chance of getting a blue one out. So that's 0.2 times 0.4, like the formula just multiply. And that, that, that's what it is. It's pretty intuitive and simple, right? Um, the same thing can be said for flipping a coin, right? They're independent flips. So if you flip the first time you get heads, that's 50% chance of getting heads. And you flip again, it's once again 50%, they're independent things. It doesn't matter how many times you flipped heads before or tails, the next flip will always be 50% each, right? So that, that makes sense. Um, now, this is where Bayes' theorem comes in. When we have a conditional probability, when one event is, is based on the outcome of the first event. So um, this is usually used in medical testing. Um, so let's set up the same example with the same numbers, right? Okay, so we have, let's say the, this is the accuracy of a test, right, of a medical test. Um, and let's say that it's, once again, 60% accurate. So we'll write accuracy 0.6. What does that mean? That means if you are sick and you 
and what is the probability of getting a positive test result when you're sick? It's 60%. So the test, the test will predict whether or not you're, you're sick or not 60, correctly 60% 60 of the time. Li likewise, it's not accurate, obviously, 40% of the time. And now this square um, will be how many sick people there are. So once again, the probability of not being sick, we'll call this P of healthy um, or P of not A, You'll see why in a minute. Uh, we'll say it's 0.8%, and obviously this P of A is then 0.2. So this means in a population, 20% um, of the people are sick. Here, let's just write sick, and 80% are healthy, right? Um, now, why is this conditional? Because in the in the first example, it doesn't matter which hand you put in the bag the marbles aren't going to change their color. It's going to be red or blue each time, doesn't matter. But in this case, it is conditional because depending on which of these probabilities you are, depending on whether you're sick or healthy, this, the, the second event, will be different. That's why this is important. Um, and this is what Bayes' theorem really is. Here, let's write the formula for it here. Uh, we write conditional probability like this. Probability of A given B equals probability of B given A times probability of A divided by probability of B. So in our case, um, like I said, probability of A is that you're sick. So obviously probability of not A, this little symbol means not A, it's 0.8. Probability of B is accuracy, um, that you get a positive test result. That's what it is here. And obviously this is probability of not B. So let's plug it in, make the same square, and see how we use this formula to get the result. So obviously, we'll have the same outcome, right? We have the same cross here. We have the same multiplication. It all stays the same because we're using the same figures, right? So we have 4, 0.48, 0 0.32, 0 0.12, 0 0.08. Now, um, we're not done because in the first example, when we have independent events, all you do is just multiply the probabilities and that's it. But in this case, uh, it gets a little bit more interesting. So we want to find out the probability of being sick while also getting a, a positive test result. So that's this square right here, right? Why is it this square? Because you got P of B, it's an accurate test result, and we want to know if you're sick. So if you, you know, you see what I mean? This is the little intersection. Um, so what do we do? We set this equal to P of B of A times P of A, that's this whole square, divided by P of B. What is P of B? P of B is all the people that got a positive test result. Now, um, because there are false positives, which is this, meaning uh, you're sick and you got a negative test result, or if you're not sick and you got a positive test result, um, we have to add two sections. P of B is the sum of this square. It's when you're sick and you got a positive test result, and this little rectangle, I'm sorry, not square, rectangle. This rectangle is when you are not sick, but you still got a positive test result. It's called a false positive, right? Does that make sense? It's, we have, um, if you're sick and you got a positive test result, which is the test did its job, it's accurate. And we have this section is when it's a false positive, right? This, but you're still healthy. So let's plug this in. Um, we have P, P of A given B equals 0 0.12, right? It's the intersection of these two, 0 0.12 divided by P of B. And like I said before, it's the sum of the two rectangles which got positive test results, which is 0 0.12 plus 0 0.32. And this is equal to, I believe, about 27%. So in this scenario, um, a random person, uh, if tested, they have a 27, if they're tested and they get a positive test result, there's a 27% chance that they're sick. Um, the thing to keep in mind is, what do we mean by random? 
Um, obviously, if, you, if you're feeling symptoms or if you're a doctor or an Uber driver or somebody who's in contact a lot, um, obviously you're not random, but just somebody without any symptoms, if we just pluck random 100 people out of the population and 27 of them get a positive test result, that's how many will be sick. Now let's do a real world example with everybody's favorite topic, coronavirus. So our P of A, the probability of being sick right now is what? Well, if you take a look at the current data and today's March 4th, we have 150 million total cases minus 65.2 million people recovered and minus 2.56 million people died divided by 7,800 million or 7.8 billion. And this gives us about 0 0.006 P of A. So the total sick population as of today is 0 0.006. So let's set, set this up with our favorite little squares. We have the first one where our sick right here, or P of A, P of A equals 0 0.006. And obviously healthy, P of not A is 0 0.994. Um, now the second square, the test accuracy. Now I read online, um, and there's different sources say different things. It varies from about 0.8 to 0.99. So for the sake of the example, let's say that the accuracy, or P of B given A, me meaning if you are sick, that you test positive 95% of the time. 0.95 and obviously this is 0 0.05 so the false positive and negative negative. Um, and if we set this up like we did before here's what we get we multiply 0 0.994 times 0 0.95 we get 0 0.9493 so these are the people who are healthy and who get a negative test result makes sense um, this square, obviously it's not drawn to proportion, but um, you can't expect me to draw one one hundredth of a little square. Um, so this one is the people who are sick and who get the correct result. So it's 0 0.006 times 0 0.95, which is 0 0.0057. Um, then down here, it's the people who are sick right here but they get a false negative, meaning they get a negative test result even though they're sick. And this is 0 0.00003. So very unlikely that if you are sick, you get a negative test result. And then obviously this is the last one, 0 0.05 times 0 0.994. The people who are healthy, right? This is the healthy section. They are healthy, but they get a false test result. And this is like I said, 0 0.994 times 0 0.05, we have 0 0.0497. Makes sense. Um, now our famous Bayes' theorem. Let's just rewrite it over here. Um, let's see if I have enough room. P of A given B, meaning that you, you test positive and that you are actually sick. It's P of B A this right here times p of a this right here divided by p of b right and just like before it's this first square right like i said this times this so it's 0 0.0057 divided by p of b all the people who got a positive test result and obviously there's two groups of them the first ones who are sick and who got the correct test result, right? So we just rewrite 0 0.0057 plus the ones who are not sick, right? Not sick, they're healthy, but they got the wrong test result down here. And this is that proportion plus 0 0.0497. And this equals to about, uh, I should say about, not exactly equal, 0. 1029 or this is obviously then equal to 10.29%. Why why does this make sense? Because at, at first glance you think 10.29% that sounds ridiculous. If only this much of the population is sick, by the way, this would be 
six percent, right? Because we can either write it as a as a as a p a probability, so it would be zero point zero zero six. But in percent terms, it's less than one percent, just a little over half a percent are sick. How can this number be ten percent? Um, and the answer lies because of false positives, because of the test accuracy. And you could say this compensates, so to speak, the really low amount of cases, but because um, because there's a risk of be getting a false result, a false positive or false negative, it kind of you know balances it out. And if this were to be higher, if we say this would be 0.99%, the test was really accurate, then this would shoot up to about 30%, right? It would be about 33% if I recall correctly. Um, so that's it, that's the interpretation of Bayes' theorem. Um, this is how to set it up, and I think this is really a simple way to understand it. You draw out the two probabilities, um, and then you just kind of do a cross section and then you plug in the values. And in the same way we can find out what is the, what is the probability of people who are healthy and get a negative result, and it would just be one minus 10%, um, so it would be about 90%. Um, so that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay geekly my friends. Want to learn more? Check out the next video. Quick reminder to subscribe to Geekly.edu.